सो टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज सिस्टी सर्कोसिस सिस्टी सर्कोसिस इज एन इन्फेक्शन विच इज कॉज बाय द टीनिया सोलियम लार्वा नाउ सिस्टी सर्कोसिस मे बी ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स लाइक वी हैव न्यूरोसिस्टी सर्कोसिस इन विच द सिस्टी सर्कोसिस ऑकर्स इन द ब्रेन देन सब क्यूटेनियस सिस्टी सर्कोसिस मीन्स सिस्टी सर्कोसिस विच ऑकर्स इन द सब क्यूटेनियस टिश्यू एंड सिस्टी सर्कोसिस विच ऑकर्स इन द मसल्स इज कॉल्ड एज द Uh, muscle cysty sarcosis and the cysty sarcosis if occurs in the eye then it is called as ocular cysty sarcosis so broadly the cysty sarcosis can occur at any site and based on the site we will name the cysty sarcosis like if it occurs in the brain then we will call it call it as neuro cysty sarcosis if it occurs in muscle then muscle cysty sarcosis and if this occurs in eye then ocular cysty sarcosis and so on so we will see how how does uh, it involve so many organs it does not involve all the organs at uh, at at a single time but uh, based on the type of organ which it is involving we will name it okay so cystic sarcosis is an infection which is caused by the cystic sarcosis cystic sarcosis cellulose larva of the tinea solium so the causative agent we have come to know that the causative agent is the cystic sarcosis cellulose larva of tinea solium now coming to the life cycle of the tinea solium if you understand the life cycle of tinea solium then you will understand how this cystic sarcosis disease occurs okay so in the life cycle of the tinea solium which uh, involves the the life cycle of the tinea solium which involves the man as definitive host and pig as intermediate host is completely different from the life cycle which occurs in the disease of cystic sarcosis okay so in cystic sarcosis disease the definitive host and as well as the intermediate host both are human but in case of the uh, uh, intestinal infection by the uh, tinea solium the uh, the life cycle of tinea solium is different like if the tinea solium is causing uh, gastrointestinal infection then the definitive host is human and the intermediate host is pig but here when the tinea solium larva is causing cystic sarcosis then uh, then the uh, definitive host as well as the intermediate host are both human for both the host is for both definitive and intermediate host it is human okay so this is a question also for explain why which is asked in university exams like why tinea solium can act as i mean why human can act as both definitive and intermediate host in case of tinea solium infection so your answer in that question should be that in case of git infection by the tinea solium the human acts as a only definitive host but in case of cystic sarcosis infection the human uh act as both the definitive and the intermediate host so if you are able to explain these two uh, infections by the tinea solium in human then you will be able to explain the why human can act as uh, both definitive and intermediate host for tinea solium infections okay so we will understand that why uh, both definitive and intermediate host in case of cystic sarcosis by tinea solium larva is human first just remember that the host uh, in case of the cystic sarcosis is human both the definitive and the intermediate host is human and the infective form is egg of the tinea solium if you remember that the git in, in in case of git infection by the tinea solium the infective form was cystic sarcosis cellulose larva present in the pork okay so the uh, cystic sarcosis cystic sarcosis cellulose larva which is present in pork that was the infective agent in case of the gi infection by this uh, tinea solium but in case of uh, cystic sarcosis disease the eggs of the tinea solium are acting as the infective form okay next is the mode of infection how does the mode of infection occur so since the infective form is eggs so of course the mode of inf infection will be the ingestion of food which is contaminated with the egg of the tinea solium now you know that the eggs are released by the a person by a, the eggs are only released by a person who has got a infection of the gi infection of the tinea solium okay 
if someone has got an infection gi infection by the tinea solium then only uh, he only then only he can uh, or he or she can uh, release the eggs of the tinea solium through their feces so when they release the feces when they release the feces and these feces gets contaminated with a food it gets contaminated with certain kind of food and if the same food is taken by the another human if the same food is taken by another human then in that human the eggs enter okay so these these eggs are entering into this human that means in this cycle there will be cysticercosis infection but if this if this uh, if this stool or if that feces is uh, taken by an pig okay if this is taken by a pig then in in the pig there will be eggs will be uh, going or penetrating the intestinal wall of the pig and then will reach to the skeletal muscle via blood the skeletal muscle of the pig via blood and in the skeletal muscle of the pig in the skeletal muscle of the pig they develop into larva the eggs will develop into larva and get deposited in the skeletal muscle itself so this is this is the pig in which this is the that pig in uh, in the muscles of whom the cysticercosis cellulose cysticercus cellulose uh, larva has been formed now when the meat or when the pork of this uh, pig is taken by a man okay when the meat of uh, sorry when the pork from this pig is taken by a man or woman then this man will get the gi infection by tinea solium okay try to understand here when the person was taking the contaminated food then he was getting cysticercosis infection but when the pork has been taken by a man then he gets the gi infection by the tinea solium okay so this whole is the difference between the gi infection by the tinea solium and the the gi infection by the tinea solium as and and the cysticercosis infection by the tinea solium let me remove all this so that we can proceed further so the x now understand what i have written here the x has been taken by a human okay the x has been taken by a human now what happens in human is that the hexacanth embryo released from the egg in the intestine of the human the hexacanth embryo is released from the egg what is hexacanth embryo hexacanth embryo means a embryo in which has six hooklets now the egg of this uh, tinea solium has got six hooklets in it that's why it is also called as the hexacanth embryo okay because of the presence of six hooklets so this hexacanth embryo is released from the egg and that penetrates the intestinal wall and through the portal circulation reaches to the subcutaneous tissue muscle eye and brain now it is not so that it will reach to all the tissues it will choose any one tissues either it can go to subcutaneous tissue it can either go to the any skeletal muscle it can either go to the eye or it can go to the brain it can individually it can go to any one side of all these four sides or some other sides may also be involved who knows where it goes through the blood blood is going everywhere na so some other sides may also get involved it may involve two two sides either it uh, suppose it has gone to subcutaneous tissue as well as brain or it has gone to eye as well as brain so different combinations can occur okay so based on this site now the embryo has reached to any one of any one or two of these following sites now at that site they these embryo gets transformed into the cysticercus cellulose larva cysticercus cellulose larva and get deposited as a cyst and get get deposited as cyst okay and get deposited as cyst if it is depositing as cyst in the brain then it will be called as neurocysticercosis if it is getting deposited into the subcutaneous tissue then it will be called as 
it will be called as subcutaneous cysticercosis if it is depositing into any skeletal muscle then it will be called as muscle cysticercosis and if it is getting deposited into eye then it will be called as ocular cysticercosis based on uh, based on this same uh, concept if it gets deposited in any other sites or any other parts of the body then that type of cysticercosis it will be called okay so this is the life cycle or in other words the pathogenesis of the cysticercosis now the symptoms what are the clinical presentation with a, with which the a patient comes to us uh, in case of cysticercosis so since the cysticercosis is involving the uh, different sites so based on the site of uh, uh, cysticercosis the presentation will also vary suppose a person is having neurocysticercosis then the clinical symptoms will be seizure headaches increased intracranial tension vertigo nausea and vomiting these all symptoms will be there if neurocysticercosis is there then uh, if if it is a subcutaneous cysticercosis then there will be palpable nodules uh, uh, at the skin and if the muscle is involved then there will be muscular pain weakness will be there if the ocular cysticercosis is there then there will be loss of vision and if the cysticercosis is involving the ventricles of the brain then there will be increased intracranial tension so these all symptoms may occur based on the site of the uh, uh, based on the site of the cysticercus cellulosi larva okay now if someone ask you specifically to write a short note over the neurocysticercosis or if suppose someone ask you to write a short note on ocular cysticercosis then you can write very easy for you all like if someone ask you to write a short note on neurocysticercosis then you can add all these uh, 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 write all these uh, life cycle or in other words the pathogenesis of the neurocysticercosis or ocular cysticercosis and then uh, in symptoms you will if they have asked you to write uh, the about the short note of neurocysticercosis then in uh, clinical presentation you will write only these symptoms only the symptoms of the neurocysticercosis like this only if they have asked you to write a short note on ocular cysticercosis then you have to write you, you will write only these symptoms or some other symptoms of eyes like pain uh, pain uh, then uh, very much uh, uh, diplopia etc these all symptoms you can write in ocular cysticercosis so based on the question you have to choose what clinical clinical features you have to write in the exam if they have only given you to write a short note on cysticercosis then you have to write all these symptoms okay now coming to the laboratory diagnosis so laboratory diagnosis is going to be the same in all the sites suppose and because it is radio diagnosis now so the diagnosis mainly uh, oh, mainly the diagnosis of the cysticercosis is mainly by the radio diagnosis so a radio diagnosis if the is the uh, investigation of choice in case of cysticercosis so you can do the uh, uh, radio diagnosis for any parts of the body based on the, the uh, i mean the location of the cysticercus cellulosi larva okay so the radio diagnosis is the investigation of choice so you can do ct scan and mri based on that you can uh, get to know about the ring sepidlian okay so anywhere if you see the ring sepidlian that means the cysticercosis has occurred at that site because cysticercosis is nothing but a cyst okay if you break the word cysticercosis then it is cyst plus sarcosis sarcosis means sarcosis means the larva uh, cysticercus cellulosi larva is uh, is uh, i mean is representing the sarcosis and cyst means cyst you know the cyst so those cysts of this uh, cysticercus cellulosi larva will appear as ring sepidlians in the uh, ct scan and mri with eccentric scolex okay so this is the feature that we that we see in case of ct scan and mri and when we are doing the ct scan and mri the prime aim of us or the radiologist should be should be to find the number of the cyst and find the location of the cyst and to find the size of the cyst these three findings should be done by a radiologist while diagnosing a cysticercosis other than that 
इम्यूनो डायग्नोसिस कैन बी डन इम्यूनो डायग्नोसिस कैन बी डन इन विच देर इज एंटीबॉडी डिटेक्शन एंड एंटीजन डिटेक्शन इफ इट इज इन एंटीबॉडी डिटेक्शन द एंटीबॉडी इन दिस सीरम एंड सी एस एफ कैन बी डिटेक्टेड बाई इलाइजा मैथड सेम कॉन्सेप्ट सेम ओल्ड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी बाई इलाइजा यू कैन डिटेक्ट एंटीबॉडी बाई इलाइजा यू कैन डिटेक्ट सीरम एंटीजन ऑफ दैट टीनियासोलियम टीनियासोलियम लार्वा ओके सो दैट यू कैन डू एंड अदर देन दैट यू कैन डू दिस्टोपैथोलॉजी सो वंस दिस इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू डू बिफोर दी आई मीन बिफोर दी सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट बेस्ड ऑन दिस बिकॉज यू हैव टू रिमूव दी सिस्ट ना सो आफ्टर रिमूविंग दी सिस्ट ओनली यू कैन डू दी हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी बट बिफोर रिमूविंग द सिस्ट इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू दी हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी सो the cystic sarcosis can be detected in subcutaneous tissue muscles eye or brain during post mortem by biopsy if the person has died then post mortem diagnosis you can do by histopathology of that cyst other investigation we can do is the fundoscopy for diagnosing the ocular cystic sarcosis so for ocular cystic sarcosis you can do fundoscopy treatment is albendazole is the drug of choice and anti anti epileptics may be given to control the seizures but the most important treatment is surgical okay most important treatment is surgical but obviously it is a tough surgery because if it is an intracranial cyst then it is going to be tough uh, surgery so you have to shift to only to the albendazole and the anti epileptic drugs that will be only uh, those drugs will be the only uh, answer to that case so this is all about cystic sarcosis if you are asked to write a short note on neuro cystic sarcosis specifically then you have to write all this okay you have to write the host the infective form the mood of infection this is this mood of infection and then the development in human this development in human is a pathogenesis of neuro cystic sarcosis okay or for that matter any sarcosis the pathogenesis is this uh, development in human part this is the pathogenesis part okay then you have to write clinical presentation based on the question you have to write clinical presentation if they have asked you uh, about neurocystic sarcosis then write only the uh, clinical presentation of neurocystic sarcosis if they have asked you about muscle cystic sarcosis then only write about the uh, clinical features of the muscle cystic sarcosis then laboratory diagnosis will be the same for all of them laboratory diagnosis will be same for all of them you can write everything radio diagnosis immuno diagnosis and then histopathology but fundoscopy is specifically for ocular cystic sarcosis okay other three diagnoses you can write in any of the cystic sarcosis then in treatment you can write about the albendazole is the drug of choice so this is all you have to know in case of cystic sarcosis